everybody, I'm Laura Trump coming to you from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. From impeachment to the coronavirus to their own presidential nomination, the Democrat establishment is on the attack. Joining me is a conservative commentator and podcast host, Michael Knowles. Michael, thanks so much for coming on the show. Laura, thank you for having me. So let's start with uh, Bernie Sanders. We know that the establishment did him wrong in 2016. They gave the nomination to Hillary Clinton. They've done it again, or they're trying to do it again right now, pushing Bernie Sanders aside, but not before their party was basically hijacked by Democrat socialists. What do you think? Well, this is the irony of it, is what the Democrat establishment is saying is Bernie Sanders isn't even really a Democrat. He's a registered independent. He doesn't really control our party. But of course, he was a registered Democrat in 2016. And his ideas, his radical socialist ideas, have become the mainstream in the Democratic Party. It's no random chance that Bernie Sanders was able to win so many votes. He almost won the nomination in 2016. Actually, he may very well have won it and had it taken from him. And this time, he's come very close as well. So now, even though Joe Biden doesn't even have half the required delegates, they're trying to push Bernie out they're trying to say, no, there's no path for you to victory. I don't think Bernie's going to get out. I think that he knows that he is winning the ide ideological fight within the Democratic Party. I think he's going to stick in and make it very difficult for Joe Biden. And then I think there's a very practical concern, which is just that Joe Biden has no stamina whatsoever. He is slurring his words. He can't remember his boss's name. He can't remember his own name. He can't remember his creator's name in the Declaration of Independence. So I think uh, what Bernie Sanders is also thinking is, gosh, this guy might not make it across the finish line, in which case, if Bernie has a lot of delegates, he'll, uh, he'll try to swoop in and take the nomination back for himself. So I want to shift to President Trump now, because contrary to criticism from the left, this president has shown bold moral leadership while confronting the coronavirus, although, of course, they try to criticize him at every turn. What are your thoughts? How do you think he's done with this? I think he's done a great job. I mean, what, what does the left expect? The way you know that he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't is they, they attack him for opposite reasons. So he right away moves very quickly to restrict travel from China, which, which pretty clearly uh, stopped the spread of this pandemic. And they attack him, right? They call him racist. They say it's an overreaction. Then he tries to calm the markets. He, he tries to keep some steady leadership. They attack him for not doing enough. They attack him for doing too much. You saw the classic, the Ron Burgundy of CNN, Jim Acosta, goes out and called, <laughs> called President Trump a xenophobe because he referred to the Wuhan virus as the Wuhan virus. And the irony, of course, is that on January 23rd, Jim Acosta on his Twitter account did exactly the same thing. They're just so furious. They're trying to figure out any reason to attack the guy. I thought the, the speech that the president gave was very good. I, I think he's got very stable leadership during this time. He's he appointed his number two to run the political task force on coronavirus, obviously Vice President Mike Pence. There's not really much more you could ask of him. And I think it's really ugly in politics to use a pandemic like this, a public health crisis, to try to score cheap points against your opponent. I get it, people take cheap shots in politics. That seems low though, even for the left. Yeah, it, it, it is low and it's sad, but that's uh, unfortunately, how low they've gotten, and, and maybe it will get even worse uh, from here. Uh, so during the impeachment hoax, you started hosting a popular podcast called Verdict with Ted Cruz. Tell us a little bit about that. So this show came together very last minute. You know, the, the Democrats have been talking about impeachment since early 2017, right? Representative Al Green said that if he feared that if they didn't impeach the president, he might get reelected. So we knew this was kind of in the air, but it comes together and we get a call and Senator Cruz wanted to launch this podcast against the impeachment hoax. And so I immediately flew out to DC and what was so wild about the podcast is, that the hearings were going on all day long. So I'm sitting in my hotel room watching the hearings, trying not to fall asleep while Adam Schiff is droning on. And then I would go to the studio. Senator Cruz would come straight from the Capitol 
to the podcast studio in the middle of the night. We're talking about one, two in the morning. Wow. And then we would, we would record the podcast from there. He would give the behind the scenes, the inside baseball, not just what we saw on C-SPAN, but what was going on between the senators in the cloakroom, the arguments that people like Adam Schiff were trying to make, pretty weak arguments. And uh, he would relay them to us and then just explain why it was all so bogus. And what's funny is nobody wanted to pay attention to impeachment itself. No one was tuning in. The Democrats just couldn't get any traction with it. And yet our show, uh, Senator Cruz's show in mind, Verdict, jumped up to number one on the charts. And I think it's because people were interested in this. They're interested in their government. They just didn't want the hack talking points that you get on left-wing cable news. They want to go a little bit deeper. And I think they realized uh, early on, and certainly by the end, that the whole thing was a sham. Yeah, well, we know that's for, for sure. And the great news is that the president was acquitted by the Senate. So, uh, and, and we did epic fun, fundraising thanks to Nancy calling for impeachment. So thanks again, Nancy Pelosi, for that. Uh, <laughs> Michael, you, you really are a breath of fresh air, you know, out in California fighting for our country, the president every day. I want to say thank you for everything that you do. And uh, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you so much, Laura. It's really nice to be here. As the Democrat establishment rises up once again, Donald Trump is the only thing that stands between them and the American people. That's the real news for today. If you'd like to get involved with Team Trump, go to DonaldJTrump.com or text Trump to 88022 to join our winning team. I'm Laura Trump from Studio 45 at Trump Tower in New York City. Thanks for joining us, everybody.